What is the meaning of life? That's the subject we've been talking about at this time on this station. And uh, our conclusion is that there surely has to be meaning for life itself. There has to be some meaning to us being here. There must be some reason why you're here and why I'm here. And uh, you're convinced of that more and more as you examine our natural world. Because it's filled with meaning and purpose. It is amazing, isn't it? If I say to you in the middle of winter, uh, see you for a game of golf at uh, eight in the evening, you automatically say, no, it'll be too dark. We won't be able to play golf at that time. It's entirely different in the summertime. You'll say, yeah, well, we might get a couple of hours in before uh, the sunset. And that's because we know in the summertime, the sun will set at such and such a time each day, and in the wintertime, it will set at such and such a time each day. There's just an order there that we know we can rely upon. It's the same with uh, what we'll eat in a certain restaurant. We say we'll see you in a certain restaurant, and we'll have some of the new asparagus. Or we'll have some of the new Beaujolais. And you know that at a certain time of the year, those items will be available. Because they're based on the order of the seasons, and the order of the seasons is absolutely reliable. It's the same if you're a sailor. You plan to come into harbor at a certain time because the tide is full. Or you plan to beach your boat and paint the bottom of it or the hull because at a certain time the tide is out. Our whole lives are based on the order of the world in which we live. And so we naturally conclude that there is order in our lives and the reason for us being here, because throughout the world that we live in, there is order. And, of course, the mind comes to that conclusion very naturally. If someone comes up and says, no, no, it's all just a result of time plus chance, we say, forget it, forget it. There might be time, and there might be even evolution involved in it, but it's not time plus chance. Because we know that wherever we discover that kind of order in our lives, it's the result of conscious, deliberate design. It isn't time plus chance that produces it. So forget that stuff. We know that there is order and meaning in our world because there is design in it. There is evidence of conscious, deliberate design and purpose. We find it in too many places to reject it. And if someone says... No, no, if you want a watch, you just uh, take all the elements of a watch and you throw them into a washing machine and you switch it on and you let it hurl around there for a half hour and then you open it up and you expect to see a watch completely, perfectly assembled and going regularly. You say, that's dumb. You will never get order and design out of the arbitrary tumbling of however many elements you care to have. Some people say, oh, well, if you, if you tumbled it around long enough, well, we just say the washing machine wouldn't last that long. The elements wouldn't last that long. There is no evidence that if you tumble it long enough, it'll result in order. Indeed, one scientist has uh, calculated that the chance formulations of a typical protein molecule made up of 3,000 atoms, the chance formulations of such a protein molecule is of the order of 1 to 2.02 .02 multiplied by 10 to the power of 231, or practically nil. It's really just ridiculous. Even if the elements are shaken up at the speed of the vibration of light, it would take 10 to the 234th billions of years to get the protein molecule for life. And so it is almost impossible to conceive for a moment that there is anything but some kind of mind or some kind of reason or some kind of intellect way behind the natural world in which we find ourselves today. We conclude that because 
the order that we perceive is an order that has to come from a mind like ours. It must be a mind that has at least the same idea of order as ours has. It must be a mind at least as intelligent as ours is. This is the kind of reasoning that the greatest minds of our generation have followed. Because some of us, of course, think, well, you know, that's not popular stuff today. The popular thing is to say, ah, it's all chance. It just happened by chance. It just happened by a big bang. It just happened, just happened. But uh, that is far from the opinion of the greatest intellects of our generation. Perhaps the greatest intellect that uh, any of us have known of in our era is that, of course, of Albert Einstein. And here is Einstein's own statement. My religion consists of a humble admiration of the illimitable superior spirit who reveals himself in the slight details we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble minds. That deeply emotional conviction of the presence of a superior reasoning power which is revealed in the incomprehensible universe forms my idea of God. Almost every scientific procedure that is followed today is built on the amazing conclusions and reasonings of Albert Einstein. He is by far and away the genius of our time. He outthought all other mathematicians. And this is his statement, his statement that is based on the pursuit of a lifetime. That is, the pursuit of his lifetime has been the understanding of our universe, of its order and of its design and of the way it works. And his statement is very clear. He says, my religion consists of a humble admiration of the illimitable superior spirit who reveals himself in the slight details we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble minds. That deeply emotional conviction of the presence of a superior reasoning power which is revealed in the incomprehensible universe forms my idea of God. Well, it's the statement of a humble man. A man who says what we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble minds. In other words, he's saying the order and design that I've been able to see. And then he implies that he's only able to see a little part of it. And if he's able to only to see a little part of it, how much can you and I see? But he says the little part of it that I'm able to understand makes it clear to me that there is a massive intellect that originated this universe in which we find ourselves. There is a great mind, there is a great reasoning power that has brought about the world that has so much design and order in it as this one in which we live. What is the meaning of life? Well, there has to be great meaning for life because the world in which we find ourselves is filled with meaning, filled with order, filled with design, filled with purpose. And some of us, of course, will say, well, there's a great deal of meaninglessness in it. Most of the meaninglessness is created by you and me and by our fellow human beings. Is there meaning in our world? Just look around you. Just analyze the phenomena that the scientists have discovered and have tabulated. And you'll come to the same conclusion as Einstein. There is deep meaning. There is deep meaning and order and evidence of design. There is great proof that there is behind our universe somewhere a reasoning mind, a power or an intellect that can think and can reason and can infer and can analyze and induce and deduce just as we can.